Hi, Dad. Welcome back to hey. another floor chat. Hey, Zoe. Welcome. Great to see you. Hey. You too. So recently on our Instagram, we posted um, a request for questions uh, from our community, and right. we got some actually really great frequently asked questions. So we're going to start with one of the first ones that I thought was really interesting about, we asked if, you know, folks had um, a workspace that was fluid. So what does that mean and how do you determine or create a fluid workspace? Cool. So like a couple of principles. I think the very first one is to remember that uh, our world is wireless now and you're not tethered to a wall necessarily. So, um, and to put wheels on everything. So if you can put wheels on your file cabinet, do it. So you can move it around. So filing doesn't have to happen in just one place. Um, if you can put wheels on a, on your work surface, do that too. So you can, you know, move it to a different lighting or a different space. Um, uh, the soul seat with the, the bamboo soul seat doesn't have wheels, but you can get it up. You can pick it up and move it around. Um, and remember that you can, even if you've got the habit of doing things in a certain location, um, if you have wireless all around your home or your office, you can, you know, you can be accessing your, you know, your work, your network. Um, anywhere. It, it might be laying down under the table. It might be, you know, uh, a lot of people work from, the, you know, have worked from their bed. Um, so that's the first principle. Um, just remember that everything's wireless, that the wireless doesn't care where you are, you know, to a certain, to a point. Um, and then next is to, uh, try different altitude, you know, work at different altitudes too. So work on the floor. Uh, we have, we have the flow desk set up here on, on top of a table so that you can stand and work at the, your laptop there. Um, you know, if you can use, if you can get headsets so that you can be walking, moving around while you're talking, um, uh, you can't always do that, but the times, the conversations that you can have and move like, you know, get up and move and get down on the floor, make as many trips up and down during the day as you can, um, all the way down to the floor, all the way standing. Uh, we have a spot in our, in our assembly area where there's some bars and we can just reach up and we can hang. So we can, you know, we'll sit there, be talking to each other and we're hanging from one of these bars, stretching. So, um, it takes a, you know, you just change your, your, Change of a mental model will help keep you keep you fluid and keep your workspace and the way you set things up fluid. Nice, that all makes sense. Um, and then, in terms of adjusting heights and maybe your levels, how do you know that the perch of your soul seat is set at the right height? How do you determine that? Generally, if you talk to ergonom ergonomists, um, if you're using it, say you're using a keyboard. Um, or a writing surface, you want your you want your elbows just a little bit above where your fingers are working, whether it's writing or, or typing, so that your wrists are pretty relaxed. So they're they're not reaching up to something or reaching way down to something else. So uh, and so figure out first the um, the height of the perch that lets you change positions and then adjust the butterfly to, so that you can get those elbows to the right orientation to the desk. So the first question is, the first thing to do is figure out the, the height, you, the, the height that lets you, you know, change up your legs pretty easily and gives you the most different postures. And then sometimes you're, you're going to have to adjust the perch. To get a particular posture, and then you may have to lower the butterfly relative to your workstation. So a lot of trial and error. 
something. Yeah, you gotta you gotta test a lot of different things out. Yeah. Yep. Another question we had about the soul seat was how to quiet the springs. Someone is experiencing a, a squeaky seat. Oh, I know, I know. We've been we've been trying uh, to solve that for a long time, and it's at this point this design it's kind of noisy. Um, we're working on we got some things in the pipeline that we're working on that would um, reduce that. If you can handle um, not having that tilt, uh, like if you find yourself preferring to have the sole seat really low all the time, then you can we can uh, you can remove the springs and you, we email us. We can give you some instructions about how to replace the springs with a shorter bolt so that it just sits there nice and flat. We also have a custom perch version that has a, a tilt, five, in, five degree tilt welded into it. So you wouldn't have to have the springs and you could have that constant forward tilt. So that's, those are two options we've developed over the years. Uh, if you need the springs, if you like the springs, um, we're stuck with the noise for now. Yeah. Um, and then what would you recommend um, the frequency of changing positions? Once you've figured out the height and the sound, someone asked how frequently you should modify your position on the sole seat. Mm, at least every 20 minutes, if not more frequently. The main thing is to listen to your body. If you're feeling discomfort, that's a signal that it's time to switch things up. Even, you know, you, you you may get away with sitting in the same position for 30 minutes and not notice it till you actually get off the soul seat. So listen really closely. Take, you know, notice how you feel at the end of the day. Makes um, uh, and and let your body tell you. And if you're not sure, every 20 minutes, just switch things up yeah perfect and then last question do you have any tips on how to convince someone's job to invest in soul seat yes yeah, so um ask find someone in hr that knows uh physical therapists uh get a note from a physician or a friendly physical therapist or uh, a chiropractor or somebody, a body worker that knows your situation and can make the recommendation. We've had a lot of folks, they've just sent the, um, sent links of our website to the people making the decisions and, uh, you know, like people in purchasing. And, and often that was enough to, you know, make the case. Uh, if you need a little extra help, you know, let us contact us and give us some, you know, let us know who may need to be in contact and we can, you know, we can do some reaching out. We can't prescribe. Um, um, we've had folks whose doctors have prescribed. Um, we, you know, it's not something we can do, but, um, and be persistent. Well, thank you so much, Dad. As always, we encourage y'all to send in your questions and we look forward to seeing you for our next floor chat. Yes, yes. Bye. Bye-bye.